It's something that uh, you think it would help. Uh, right help. How do y'all go there? I have a book. Well, two books that I would be glad to learn to you. Yeah. Um, anybody that should be in the world. Okay. 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 I can't really speak much. Probably need to But they can get you in the head. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. I've always wanted to do that. To <laughs> 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 so call the meeting of the order in the court. Called them to uh, order the meeting of the Thomas Den Historic Preservation Commission and welcome our guest, um, Dakota. Um, what's your last name again? Uh, Terrell. Terrell. Dakota Terrell. And welcome. We're glad to glad to have you. All right, we're going to conduct a little business here as soon as I get the glasses on and see what we got going on here. You got it. There we go. You know how I am, Taylor. All right. So, um, do I hear a motion to, I'm oh, sorry, roll call? I got you. Uh, Ms. Burdett? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. Ms. Graham is absent. She's excused. Um, Ms. Hoyle is absent. She's excused. Ms. Tab? Here. Mr. Haney? Here. Dr. Crawford? Here. Ms. Uphold? Here. All right. All right. Do I hear a motion for approval of the minutes for the March 7th meeting? March 7th, I'm sorry. The February 7th meeting. No, March 7th. Oh, right. March 7th. Okay, it's moving. Sorry. It is moving. All right, we got a first from uh, a second. All right, got a second. Second. All in favor? All in favor. All in favor. Do I, all in favor? Mm-hmm. Any nay? Right. Do I hear a motion to adopt the agenda for today? Any changes? No, ma'am. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Does anyone have any interest in any of the businesses being represented today? Do you have a monetary interest or a, or a relative who happens to own it or anything you would like to disclose? All right. Dispensed with disclosure complex. Yes, ma'am. All right. First up, 113 West Gordon Street. So this is an update, actually. Um, Mr. Huckabee actually approached me regarding this. You know, we had approved to do a Coca-Cola uh, mural on slices in downtown Thomaston. Um, and, and Jared approached me asking if we could potentially do something a little uh, bigger that also welcomed people into downtown Thomaston. Um, so I reached out to Color the World Right, and they provided me this rendering of the Coke mural. Um, I think it's. I think it'll be a great addition. It's not much more than what we were already paying for the Coke mural on this wall, and the, the price is going to be offset by Mr. Huckabee. So we're still going to cover the original amount, and then he'll cover the rest of it to make this possible. Um, so I just wanted to bring this before you guys and, uh, and request uh, an approval um, of this modification to the original COA that was received for the uh, Coke mural at uh, 113 West Gordon. Okay. Any discussion? Questions? Comments? Love it. All right. Do you hear a motion to accept the uh, revised COA? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. And so. That was the, just so to let you know, that was the original. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so right. I mean, so it went from So it went from that, which I, I still love the Thomaston. Mm -hmm. If it didn't have Thomaston on it. Yeah. But no, when you're coming, once you come over the hill, coming up, coming up Gordon Street awesome. from the hospital, and you see, you know, that Coca-Cola and then downtown Thomaston, it's going to look great. Mm -hmm. We're going. And then, so because we did make this change, um, this mural is going to be completed uh, April 30th and May 1st. Okay. Cool. Will there still be a, the unveiling as planned on the? Tentatively. Okay. That might change. Um, they've had a couple supply chain issues, had a couple people that were out sick with COVID. Um, so some of their scheduling has gotten changed, but um, I'm working on finalizing some of those some of those dates and we'll have an answer hopefully by the end of this week. Okay. But this for sure, April 30th and May 1st will be this Coke mural edition uh, in downtown. All right, so ordered. All right, our next order of business is 109 South Center Street, um, Dakota Terra. Um, so this is for a new sign for the hemp store. How about 
coming up and talking to us. Because because you can stay on the little X on the ground right, right there. Little X, and that yep. way we we'll get you You're ready for your close up. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of let us know what you're doing, what you're looking to do. Tell us about your store, um, and tell us about you know what you're looking to do as far as the exterior, any kind of renovations, modifications you're looking to make. Okay. Um, as far as uh, what we intend to do, um, we intend to open a hemp wellness store for the um, citizens of Thomaston and surrounding areas. Um, we intend to provide a variety of products, ranging from skincare products to um, oral um, tinctures, which is the uh, drops. Vapor products, uh, lotions, um, candles, and um, the modifications that we intend to do. Um, I don't know if you guys have the visual in front of you. They do. Um, we discussed when I walked in uh, painting the bricks outside white. Um, we're taking the white uh, bars out of the windows. Um, we're putting up a temporary partition halfway through the building. And um, from there, it's going to be uh, putting in recess lighting and getting inventory ordered. Uh, we have all of our business licenses and stuff uh, squared away with the city, so we're just uh, waiting on contractors at this point. So, do um, you guys have any questions for me? When is your opening? We're shooting to be open by the 22nd, which is the uh, down, which is for the downtown. Yes, and straw. Yes, ma'am. So. Um, it could be before then, and if it is, great, but we're shooting for the 22nd. Okay. And as um, we were talking when you came in, as a board, we're, we're not a no board, we're a yes board, and we, won't, we try to figure out how to get to yes. Um, we're charged with keeping the downtown in a cohesive manner that's um, um, in, you know, in keeping with our historic uh, downtown. So. Um, first impression was that there's a lot going on on this building um, and I'm I would like to uh, get a copy didn't have time to get a copy of what it looked like prior I don't think since that front facade has been painted already that it would be any problem to paint those bricks do you see any any problem with that no um, no, um one more thing there's wood outlining the bricks and such, we were planning to paint that as well. I don't know if there's any kind of issues there. No. No. Would it just be white? Uh, paint it white? We're toying with white or green to draw the green out in our logo since it's so little. And that is a, that's a nice shade of green. You know, green. that's, I, um, which I, I think that. I'm so happy to hear you're taking the, that wrought iron out. Yes, you know, Which is oh decorative Lord. in its day and. Yes. And um, what do you envision for your storefront? As far as like inside the window area. Yeah, what's in the window area? See, we do not know just yet. We're leaning toward more to an educational thing, having like an easel and um, having somebody who is artistically inclined to uh, draw little graphics for us or if it's something that we could print off and get printed on there. Yeah. Definitely uh, nothing flashy, no flashy signs, no... Um, uh, no, we sell this here, none, none of that. Uh, we're looking for, uh, we want people like you guys to walk Classy. in there, essentially. Yeah, we, don't want you, we don't want people to associate us with the wrongdoers in our, <laughs> in our industry. I think, you know, you could definitely partner with Hometown and, and provide some type of little educational platform to let people know, hey, this is what CBD hemp is, can be beneficial for, you know, can help with X, Y, and Z, uh, medical ailments, you know, something along those lines, I think, would definitely uh, help introduce your potential clientele to the product because um, you're right, automatically they're kind of going to kind of be like, uh, yeah, you know, just like when I told you, make sure you do not have any kind of insignia, um, on this sign, I think you did a great job with, you know, I think Relief, I think that works. I think it's a really cool, catchy, um, you know, name for your company. And I think once you get settled and get in there, I think you'll do well. Um, but, you know, our first conversations that we had, I told you that it really depends on how you market it and how you portray it. Mm -hmm. And from what you're telling us, I think you'll, you'll do fine if you continue to approach it in this respectable manner. Mm -hmm. um, my only thing is if you do want to paint 
um, you know, the exterior, that, that green color, I would like to see some type of rendering of what it's going to look like. Okay. Um, you know, we can probably just do a contingent uh, approval today, um, depending on, you know, you getting us an updated rendering showing where that brick facade at the bottom is painted the white. And then if you want to trim out those sides, I just need to render what it'll look like if it had the green and if it had the white. And that way I can kind of give it back to the board and let them say, hey, we really think this looks good or we really think this looks good. Sure. But we could go ahead and do a contingent approval um, based on you providing us those secondary renderings. And as soon as we give you the green light, you're good to start rather than having you come back at the next meeting. Okay. I personally would be fully comfortable approving a white. Um, I'm a little yeah. weary of the green. Um, okay. I understand the idea of making the sign pop. I love the green itself on the sign. Um, but also, like for me, like I think going with more of our neutral color scheme, neutral color kind on the building itself would okay. probably be more historically appropriate. Um, okay. That's just kind of my two cents. Okay, well, I think I think, I'll, I think the white. I'll scratch the green and I'll make it known that. Well, don't scratch the green yet because I think this green is is kind of a neutral okay. shade. If um, I, let's see a, a rendering, yep. you know, okay. let's, let's, let's just have some options because we want to get to yes and the green may look great, it may look terrible, but you know, yep. to Matt's point, you know, it, it may want to be more neutral, but I think that's going to, that shade is going to be really neutral when you put it on there. But yeah, let's see a rendering of it. Yeah, and I could connect you to someone that can help you put one together real quick. Yeah, real Kind of let us know what it'll look like with this what yeah. it'll, versus this and we can kind of let you know from yeah. there. Because we're okay. not, is your sign person's are they going to be able to get the so sign up for you by the rather than opting for a traditional sign we're going to do is just a stencil on the building oh so you just want to paint it you're not actually want to get a sign okay well um so here was we had talked about not putting it way up high mm -hmm. because really and truly it gets lost and and i understand the thing about the trees but the trees are there are plans in the works for that downtown area okay. to maybe um, do some pruning. Um, if I'm walking down the street, you know, I'm not looking way up there. And even when I'm driving, there there are signs up there that I've never even seen before. But if you brought it down where I could see it, um, I would actually like to see it down here in this area, and maybe even a little bit longer. That relief, it almost looks like a tea shop. You might want to put a tea bar in, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just. I will say we're waiting. I have plans in the works as soon as the legislator acts for to allow for food products to be infused. It's already it's a trend in North Carolina right now. They're called cannabis cafes, but they're hemp cafes, but cannabis is more catchy. Um, and they sell a variety of baked goods, coffees, teas, all infused with it. So because yeah, I come in and sit down and feel comfortable having a cup of tea and learning about the hemp products and mm -hmm. um, yeah I don't want to shy away from that store and that and that is an inviting logo um, I think at, at first it seemed a little bit um, too contemporary but I think it can be I think it can it's definitely tiny. work absolutely um, discussion let's let's throw some more questions and comments I think okay. it would be more noticeable uh, Why not quite so high okay uh, I'm sort of like she is about that. If you ride by or walk by, you don't tend to look. You don't want to break your neck to look up. <laughs> I think it would be much more uh, okay. easy to observe. And like I said, we toyed with that idea as well. Just with the tree being yeah. right outside the door, it's just hard to see. Mm -hmm. And we, we walked down, and it was easier to see walking down the sidewalk, definitely. Um, and you wouldn't have to. So I'll definitely... Uh, express that to my partners and get a resolution. And two, one thing you could consider is after getting the, the sign on the building itself, mm -hmm. doing one that comes off of the front of the building so that way you, when you're walking on the sidewalk you see it right in front of you, yeah. above it. Yeah, I, have you seen like Lily Jane's sign, how it's mm -hmm. separated? Lily Jane's yeah. paradox, how it kind of comes mm -hmm. off the building. They're right by the uh, dog groomer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing just popped into my head. We have not went one way or another on this but in order to see the sign at night 
since it is a stencil, is there any ordinances in place for like a, a, a light I'm over? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> so you can't, the, the sign can't be lit, but you can uh, petition to install a light. Okay. Um, so uh, Slices and Hometown just were approved at the last meeting with a nice uh, kind of modern light fixture that lit, lights the, uh, the sign. So if you were to tie into that, again, we're trying to create some kind of uniformity. Um, so if we have, if you were tying to that, I think it, we could get that approved easily. Okay. So there's definitely options moving forward on why we can, if you do well, how we can continue to help you enhance your building to make it look even more aesthetically pleasing, we can definitely do that. Okay. More questions, comments? Mm -hmm. All right, shall so we? Um, real quick, okay. uh, this lower portion, like the address and everything, that, that was, was door. No, I asked that too because that is confusing. Like okay. it confused me because whenever I saw it, I was like, "Okay, I've never seen that writing before ever." So I was told that that's just more to explain the left is what this is, where it's at, and the picture on the right is what it is gotcha. officially. Okay. okay. And while I've got you there, I wanted to. So this is from our last meeting. This is. This is what we're not going for. <laughs> and oh, this wow. Is, Circa that, 1940s, that was a 1940s, downtown Thomas. And that was in our packet from last time. Mm. Um, but I want to show you, you probably haven't seen what the hometown printers is going to look like. And this may help you. Um, let's see, where's hometown? First one. The very first one. All right, there's the People's Bank. Wow. Okay. So this is what hometown's going to look like. So, is that metal? Okay. Sheet so metal. That, that's it sheet metal. Up. So you know it's there, but it's you know you don't know it's there. It just. And those are the exact lights that we were talking yeah, about. Yes. So that's. Okay. So With those lines. Okay. And then the other one that that's. So that's going where the people's big Yes. Mm -hmm. And that may help you, you know. Uh, and the other one that we have is. On English's Cafe, it was this, and then we've approved, we've approved the, um, and she's keeping the English's name on there, which is really important, and then that'll go above the door. So that's another one of those, you know, metal looking, um, and so those were approved, and those will be going in as well, so you know, keep it kind of cohesive. Um, so shall we approve contingent upon painting the brick? So my, my rec city recommendation would be to uh, motion to approve this contingent upon um, Dakota and I working together to uh, provide two more renderings of the building uh, with the exterior modifications that we've discussed today um, and then getting feedback from you guys on which one you feel is best suited for, uh, for his location um, within the next week and a half. Yeah, we can we can do that. We can call a special meeting if you want and get together and do it. Yeah. Would he be able to go ahead and get started on the top portion? Yes. So once, you know, and with it being contingent, it's just I'll, what we'll do is I'll get those renderings to you guys and you kind of just give me your feedback. Since he's already been approved, we can just kind of say, hey, we like this rendering best or we like this rendering best. We wouldn't even have to do a special call meeting. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can do that. Do I hear a motion to um, accept the uh, Staff's recommendation Motion. for the contingencies. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. So the motion carries. And uh, thank, thank you so you much guys. for yeah, thank you. working with us. <laughs> no, man. So I'll uh, look forward wait to wait having to... more shops downtown. So thank you for investing. Yes, in absolutely. Thank you. Can't wait to come find out about it. Give me a, uh, shoot me a text, and after this meeting, I'll send you a contact, to work on the renderings for you, okay. and we'll get rolling on that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, you, you sir. Nice Thank you very much. All right. Next order: building, building, <laughs> build, build, build. <laughs> All right. Last but not least on today's agenda, obviously this is a lot smaller than our last one. Um, Excuse me, Columbus Signs and Lighting is looking to purchase or, excuse me, lease out uh, the building at 500 North Center Street. Um, they are expanding their, um, they're expanding into this property. They already own the property um, that's adjacent, that kind of white building that's beside the, the waterworks department. Mm -hmm. They own that and they're actually going to be leasing this property from, uh, from Mr. Holloway as well. Um, they are looking to have their signs and then have like a lighting uh, showroom as well inside of the building um, and they're looking to apply for the facade grant. 
So they have uh, requested a COA um, for their renderings for the building um, so that they can move forward with their facade grant application. Is this where the daily was? Yes, sir, it is. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. it was a, Stevens, it was, Stevens Auto back in the day. It was a pool, swimming pool yep. uh, mm -hmm. supply, yeah. which I hated to see them leave. But I have a question. I, I know it's out of Columbus. Yeah. No, it's, they're out of Thomaston. I think they had a location in Columbus. Well, it said Columbus, Georgia, slash Thomaston, Georgia. So they were in Columbus originally, and then they, they were from Thomaston, though, and they moved back to Thomaston, and they just said, you know, everyone recognizes us as Columbus Signs and Lighting, so that's why we haven't changed the name, but they're based out of Thomaston I just now. Say, I just, you know, going into towns, I hate seeing... I don't know. Or Thomaston, and seeing Columbus, because that's so <laughs> confusing. <laughs> But I know that's their name. I know that's their name. I mean, yeah, it's just. Yeah, I know I, we can't ask you to change their change their no, name. I did. I asked the same question to Miss Tammy when I when I first met her. I was like, are you guys? Like, we just got a second look. No, that's our main location. Um, we were in Columbus. She said it is, <laughs> they wanted to invest in Thomaston and, and bring their business back to Thomaston. But everyone in the industry recognized their name as Columbus Signs and Lighting. So from a business standpoint, it didn't make sense for them to change their name and risk potentially losing customers because people didn't realize, oh, we're Thomaston Signs and Lighting. Well, it's probably, if it's incorporated, it's incorporated. It is. Yeah. They make good signs. They do. They do. They make ours. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just have to wonder why do you have to have red? You know, the building to me it's more classy when you kind of have a color scheme going on. Are they going to keep that paint color? Evidently. They're, they're going to be. Yeah, they're going to keep kind of keep the paint color. It's going to be three toned. Um, they're going to paint the exterior wall with that three color combination, so that light brown, that kind of tan, and that dark brown. And then they're going to put that sign up. And if you flip this over, they're looking to do a little uh, a little sign. Yeah. As well. Did that little building there get torn down? Or it did not. It's still there. Okay. And it will stay there, right? It will stay there, yes. Yeah. I mean, I understand your sign has to, you know, stand out, and it is pretty much across from Burger King and all that, <laughs> but. Um, will this be where the awning's at on the side? You know, I'm not sure if they're going to do an awning. I think it may, they may just keep it, uh, keep it open it right there. In there, so I wasn't sure. Oh, well, I guess they are installing new bronze awning, then, yeah. They're, they're going to be installing the bras only right there. So Based that's just one of those lines. straight out oh, square so ones. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm. Oh, the brown the color ones. Color oh, yeah. I think it would look a lot better with an awning, too. But a square awning or? I think uh, this may be a regular awning. It's a regular, just but it's bronze in color to kind of match the color of the building. Okay, so down below. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's right there. So it's on the last it's on the oh, last okay. page okay. awning. Mm -hmm. Got it. Looks good. Yeah, but that's um so twenty eight feet it looks like it's gonna go all the way across yeah. the, over those windows. And really they have a heavy sun load, so that's gonna that'll help. That'll help out. tremendously. Yeah. Okay. Any more comments, discussion? Is this a part of it's that separate. I'm going to go over that in just a second. All right. Did I hear a motion to accept the Columbus um, yes. sun motion. and lighting? Motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? No. Yeah. Any opposed? All right. So approved. No, ma'am, they're not. They just kind of provided that rendering. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, they should provide a rendering without it. Are they going to still keep something in the old Benford building? Yes. Where they are now? Yes, sir. So a lot of their, like, they produce all of the uh, the signs. So they, they kind of manufacture the signs in that building, and then they're going to have some of the signs that they, they sell okay. in this building, as well as they're going to have, like, a lighting studio where people can go in and actually shop for new lights for their home. Oh, okay. Taylor's going to tell us about these markers. Yeah, so, you know, I love those historic markers. So I actually had the opportunity to attend uh, Mobilize Main Street last week, and I got to go up to uh, the city of Rome and the city of Ackworth, and then I got to tour uh, Flowery Branch's new downtown farmer's market. Um, 
with that, I met about 40 uh, downtown professionals from across the state. I mean, as far as Valdosta, Jessup, North Georgia, we all kind of convened on Rome, got to tour downtown Rome, got to see some of their mixed use projects, got to tour some of their downtown lofts. Um, very interesting, very cool. One thing I noticed was that the Rome Area Heritage Foundation, they had this program where business owners can apply for a placard on their building to kind of let you know, hey, this is the Fincher building. It was built in 1872. It has served as, you know, this, 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 and this, and kind of gives a little history on that building. So I thought it'd be really cool if we could figure out some kind of partnership, whether it be through HPC, whether it be through the, uh, the Historical Society, um, you know, to kind of try to do partner with the archives to do, do these same types of plaques on our buildings in downtown Thomaston, especially in preparation for the, uh, for the bicentennial that's coming up in 2025. You know, if we can have these in place on all the buildings in downtown Thomaston, kind of tells that history and helps tell our story, I think it'd just be a really neat addition. Um, so I just kind of want to present this to you guys, get your feedback. And, uh, you know, I did mention it to Jameson. Jameson loved the idea and she was going to get with Kayla of the Historical Society on it. So, um, you know, I think this could be a great partnership where we could maybe, you know, collaborate, you know, HBC, Historical Society, archives, all kind of come together and do something like this for our downtown businesses, especially the ones in the historic district that have that, uh, that character since we have lost so, so much over the years. You know, eventually I would love to do something with the First Baptist to have some type of placard right there for uh, Hotel Lufson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this kind of tells the history Absolutely. of Hotel Lufson. You know, and I mean, it was a landmark in our community. Same thing for Martha Mills, you know. I would love to see, you know, where we do the uh, the new plaza at Great Generation. I would love to see some type of little placard, you know, that pays homage to the Martha Mills and how much of an impact it had on this community for so many years. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's something I noticed in, in, uh, in Ackworth. Ackworth very cool little town you know they've experienced tremendous growth over the last 20 years they've gone from a 9,000 person town with 400 businesses to a 25,000 person town with 1,200 businesses the city council kind of took it upon themselves to do a quality of life improvement plan back in the early 2000s they went up they went about it by purchasing 67 properties adjacent to their downtown it was about 160 acres they created a new park a new community center. They have a downtown uh, event center that's an old African American school house that they turned into a downtown event center. They built a uh, a, tra uh, a trail system kind of that kind of leads into some of their federal federally owned property um, and ties back into their park. 900 new parking spots. I mean, it was incredible. Um, where was I going with that? But one thing one thing I noticed was that uh, where did my, my where did my it just went, what was I hitting? What was I hitting on? Small, the commemorative um, to recognize historic Senate. Have you have you all been down? It's Monday. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I feel better now. Um, have you all been to um, Griffin and seen the? They have these on the the sidewalk, and it says which movies were yeah. made there. Mm -hmm. And then up on the building itself, they have a plaque that honors those people who were um, died in the war, war, puts their branch of service in their name and, and uh, their... Panels, I was hitting on the panels. So in downtown Ackworth, right there at their African American uh, old schoolhouse, they turned to an event center, they've got these little panel panel boxes that kind of tell the history of the African American, because that whole area used to be an African American little small town within Ackworth, and so it kind of pays homage to that area, you know, the history of that area, the schoolhouse, um, and then they have their old train depot that they rebuilt and they've got a ton of history about the city of Ackworth inside there, some interactive little, you know, we can press this button and listen to this person kind of talk about the history of Ackworth and, you know, what they've experienced, the change in growth. So, you know, eventually I'd love to have something along those same lines, you know, particularly if we could eventually get into the courthouse and have some type of little welcome center. Um, so I without, think a great without even space. knowing it, Taylor and I have been doing the same thing. This is a marker in Macon, and this is their neighborhood marker. And I've been working with, y'all can look at that if you want to. I don't think I have anything incriminating on there. Um, so I've been working with um, Councilwoman Reeves, and we're looking at doing this on the other, other side of the highway. Um, that's in Macon. And it recognizes the neighborhood. Because in talking to community affairs, we have the, the historic marker for Silvertown, the 
Allison and I were involved in. And um, they won't do another one because um, East Thomaston and up through the Luck Circle, they're all within the National Register District. So they won't do a separate marker, but they will do an identical marker if they wanted to put one over there. Now that's one option. We're just we're just now looking at what the options are with the bicentennial coming up. We want that we want all of the National Register District to be recognized. So we were thinking that this might be a more um, flexible and affordable because the duplicate will be about six thousand dollars. We don't know yet how much this is going to cost, but um, there could be one by the mill mm -hmm. to recognize the mill. And there could be another one up at Deluxe Circle, which was called North Village or Highway Village. Um, so, and you can put them in even other areas, like where the old Tabernacle used to be and things like that. Um, I've got the name, just got the name of the foundries. I've got a list of foundries that do these, so you have to, there are only certain people who specialize in these. So, um, I think these would be a good... Um, I'd also like around the, the park there on um, Goodrich, mm -hmm. I'd like to see those banners saying Greatest Generation Park, you know, on the, the light poles and, the, and I'd like to see, um, you know, other markers on the other side so that but people, they, they actually know what they're looking at, you know. But with the bicentennial, I think it's not too early to start working no. toward that. No, it's coming. It's coming quick. So. Oh, the street, the street toppers, um, where the street signs are, there are toppers that go up. They're inexpensive, I believe. I haven't looked into those yet. But it says historic district, and we could put those on top throughout of the, the uh, throughout the yeah, just historic district. that yeah. way. If you're riding your bicycle through there, or whatever, on those beautifully paved and striped streets. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on replacing mailboxes because mine totally got taken out by the guys. Did it? Did it know. really? Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I know, felony right now. Yeah, you got your street paved and striped. I know, it looks good. Yeah. Looks like <laughs> That's all I have, guys. Um, I do have one thing to kind of bring to your attention. I don't know Please. if you've noticed. Uh, I was downtown shopping over the weekend and realized yeah. there is a new store. Looks like they were gonna have a bubble, bubble, bubble tea. tea. Yeah, I know. Um, and they'd already put signage in yeah. the windows, not to be like that guy, but at the same time, I do want to make sure. That so I did, I did oh. tell her that as long as it wasn't exterior, she was welcome to put that okay. in the window cool. to kind of let people know this is coming. Awesome. Um, but she, but that was one say. of, that was no. So that was one of the things that was gonna be on the agenda today. They were trying to get me a rendering in time to get it approved. Uh, they didn't have the chance, so they're gonna be on the May, on the May meeting Fantastic. for their exterior renovations. Oh, good. And what address is that? Mm, it's the Southern Stitches building right there beside uh, oh, yes. Flint Road Studio. Yeah. Oh, um, and they're going to be doing a boba tea lounge and an axe throwing bar. Cool. I wanted to, just to make a suggestion. I don't know what your plans are with the um, structure that you have outside of um, um, the metal water tower. Okay, yeah. Um, wouldn't it be cool if you make that into a water fountain? So the plan is, um, you know, Miss Miss Cromer had kind of talked about, uh, you know, would that have to be something that stayed there permanently? And obviously, we told her no. So the plan was, uh, once our downtown farmers art farmers market is built, to kind of transition that over to um, the farmers market. And yeah, I love the idea of incorporating that into it's some kind of it's rusted, some kind of water and it's feature. Water, yeah. It's a water tower, so why not? It's cheap. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like a water pump. Yeah. And I think it'd be more attractive. And it'd be like an interactive art piece. Right. I, I love that idea. And so we had discussed about moving that over and having some kind of little art park inside of our farmer's market. Well, she probably wouldn't mind if you left it there, if you just kind of added something yep. like that. Yep. And that way you can have more, I mean... The, it just depends on the, the functionality, if we can make that happen within that, uh, within that space, uh, you know. We could definitely, I could get Kyle to look at it and see if that could be something we could potentially do. But it is on private property then, you know, so that's that city owned the actual water piece, but then all that property is owned by Ms. Cromer. Um, so anything that we do has to be approved okay, by Ms. Cromer. Yes, ma'am. I think it's real cheap to do that. It's like a fish tank. Oh. All right. right. And um, and other business that I would like to uh, ask about, where are we on 308 North High Tower? 308 North High Tower. Mm -hmm. Are we going to annex it or? 
Cotton Alliance Warehouse. Mm -hmm. Cotton Alliance Warehouse. So, you know, we spoke <coughs> with some individuals um, from the uh, Department of Natural Resources, I believe, is who's over those uh, historic tax credit programs. Um, and, you know, based on the fact that, number one, it's not in our local historic district, and number two, that is not on the natural, National Registry, in order for them to qualify for any kind of historic tax credits from the federal level, they'd be looking at like two or three years uh, down the line um, for that, go through that process. So, kind of backtrack, I had met an individual um, who was looking for a space to potentially do a commercial production facility in town. Um, and I connected that owner of that property with this individual um, to potentially, you know, if we can turn the old Cotton Alliance warehouse into a commercial production facility. Um, thought it'd be a very cool idea. And the fact that, you know, the state of Georgia has tons of film and movie credits that are available, so they could also still take advantage of the tax credits that are available. Um, and I believe the state of Georgia would jump on the fact to be able to take this old 1890s cotton warehouse and turn it into a commercial production facility in a rural Georgia town. Um, they had some conversations, not last Friday, Friday before last when I was out of town. I got to follow up with them to see how those went. Um, but as of now, no to that answer. But there could be a cool project in the works uh, for, uh, for that property, as well as Miss Judy Green's, Brandon's property. Um, got some cool stuff in the works for that that we should be seeing over the next uh, couple months. Let's start with the Peru and end with the read. <laughs> that's something that that's something might be coming to downtown on a smaller scale. Um, I'll keep you updated on that. Any update with the old farmhouse? I right, can't hang on just a second. Let me let's finish with this okay. um, for Sorry. my my um, order here. You want me to let me do my hammer thing? Um, so I just wanted to. So even if somebody rents that space are we still talking about bringing that building itself no matter what they're going to use it for bring it in if the property owner requests to have it admitted into the local historic district then we can do that at this time he has not requested and he hasn't requested that no ma'am okay so that's on the back burner yep okay um so we've talked about the markers and um so also i wanted to ask about i had i was in big chick the other night and I ran into these worker bees who were over at 308 North Green Street okay. um, and that house you can tell it's historic by looking at it um, Jameson and I looked up uh, some of the records trying to find out when it was built it's that big old white two-story and the the fellow that was doing the work said that the city zoning people told him that they had to tear down the two outbuildings, one of which was a summer kitchen. So that dates that, that <coughs> building to well over 100 years. Now, at what point does zoning actually, it, it didn't ring true to me at all. And I'm like, no, nah, that doesn't make the any sense. The only time the city would ask something um, be torn down was if it was a condemn condemnable structure. Mm -hmm. And we would have to get, follow the condemnation process, but we wouldn't just tell someone, especially zoning, um, you know, because that would be Oasis. Oasis isn't going to tell someone, hey, you need to tear down this. Yeah, exactly. Because when he said summer kitchen, that immediately, and he said they had this fabulous, you know, fireplace and all this kind of stuff in there. Do we know who owns 308 North Green? Is that uh, the one just past the Baptist Church? There mm -hmm. on the is, that great is it Snow? Is it Don Snow? It's building? Oh, no, it's the one right before So Barbara Screen. Oh, that's not North Green. That's, that's South, South Green. Green. Yeah. South Green. Yeah, that's under the that? state. Barbara Scrimshire is the contact person yeah, on that. I approached her to buy it about six months ago and I was turned down. So. Oh, and that's South Green. Yeah, I was going to she, she said, uh, I'll put you on the list. I said, great. Oh, wow. So, but we don't know what, I mean, that would be, you know. She had it painted a couple of years ago, I think, too. It looks a lot better than it did. We, one of the big problems with that is that area behind it. Yes, it's so overgrown. Behind. There's two acres of land with that. Like you can right. so much there, outside of that's downtown, that's downtown Thomason. <laughs> I know, that's what, it's, it's all wonderful. It's kind of wildlife in there too, I understand. Yeah, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's like a little time capsule, you know. It is that, you know, that, that property and the Weaver Dallas property. I mean, these are, you know, acre plus properties just outside of your downtown square. Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, when the when uh, the we were dallas house started to be painted i heard from a lot of people and uh, i talked to community fairs well, to not community fairs but to um, the georgia trust and they said 
Absolutely. They said we actually told him to paint it. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, he has to. He has to follow a four-step yes. process. I mean, everything yeah. has to be approved before he can do any yeah. of that. There's an easement on that that mm -hmm. house, so he can't. Um, I've been curious about that. I think he stay approval in order to paint that. Good. And another thing to, that I wanted to bring up today too, Taylor and I talked about that convenience store. It's not in the. It's not in the downtown. So I guess. I mean, it's within the DDA. It's just not within the historic district. Yes, yeah, within right the DDA. There, the one right there. At, uh, family Dollar. Yes. The used to be a, uh, dry cleaners. The dry cleaners, yeah. The one, yeah, the one that's next to the hospice. Mm -hmm. And that the windows. Oh no! All okay. Used to you're talking about not. The, you're talking about the one that's kind of right down here. The one right downtown. That's a lot yeah. of paradise. Yeah. It's just it has all that junk in the window, so. Um, so we make a formal complaint. Should we make a formal complaint as a body, or should just an individual make that complaint? Because that needs to be cleaned up. It's an eyesore. Or should the DDA do it? How should we do that? I mean, a complaint to the uh, to the building official will get you know. Obviously, I don't believe they're in compliance when it comes to some of our signage requirements. I exactly. think there's like 25 percent of window coverings um, is the max. Um, so I believe they're in compliance on that. So that make a complaint um they, they'll get a visit this week on that yeah where is it exactly you know the one by the hospice is that little bitty the old world TV. finance building right there across yeah. from colony bank the old world finance oh, and it yeah, says lottery yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it's got all the junk in the window and it's got that bright light that shines in the street You're talking about where the gas company used to be Atlanta yeah gas light mm -hmm. building. i don't know yeah i don't know i'm not from there. <laughs> Any more questions? Any more concerns? <laughs> All right. Any, anything else to bring up that we'd like to discuss? All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Good, All right. Hold on. Let me cut this. Let me know when that's off.